Welcome back. I'm going to solve a problem now that finds the centroid of an area. And we're going to do something really simple to make sure that we understand the concept. So let's take a square. And let's make the length of both sides 2 inches. And we want to find out where the centroid is. If we can find the centroid, we can find the elastic neutral axis. Now, we all know intuitively that the centroid, which essentially is the center of the square, is going to be right here in the middle, right? But just for kicks today, we're going to actually derive it by breaking this up into areas. So just for kicks, we're going to call this area 1, and down here, area 2. And we'll make them both 1 inch. OK, so in order to find the centroid or the elastic neutral axis of this cross section, the first thing we have to do is take these subcomponents, area 1, area 2, and calculate the areas. So area 1 equals 1 inch high times 2 inch wide equals 2 square inches. Area 2, let's take a look. It's the same dimension, so it's the same area, also 2 inches squared. Now, in order to find the centroid, what we want to do is establish a benchmark line. So we're going to use the bottom of the cross section as our benchmark. And our equation is that the sum of the areas times the distances to the benchmark is equal to y bar times the total area. Where y bar is defined as distance between bottom of cross section and elastic neutral axis, aka centroid. So in order to do that, we have the areas of the two different parts. So it's pretty easy to get the total area, right? 2 inches plus 2 inches squared is 4 inches squared. And each one of these component areas, I'm going to simplify the line work a little bit so nobody gets confused. So the centroid of this area is here and the centroid of this area is here. So let's find out what our distances are. These distances are between the centroid of each component to our benchmark. So in other words, area 1, area 2, the distance between the centroid of area 1 and the benchmark is this distance, d sub 1, and d sub 2 is this distance. And of course, the centroid's halfway through. So this is one half, and this is also one half. Same thing down here. One half and one half. All right, so again, D1 is the distance from this point 
to this benchmark, which equals 1 plus a half, which is 1 and a half inches. And for D2, we see that's only 1 half inch. So let's plug into our equation. A1D1 plus A2D2 equals Y bar area total 2 inches squared times 1.5 inches plus 2 inches squared times 0 0.5 inches equals Y bar times total area which we've computed as 4 inches. Let me grab a calculator. 2 times 1.5 equals 3 plus 2 times a half, that's 1, that equals 4, and now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 4, and we get y bar equals 1 inch. Look back at our definition, y bar is the distance between the bottom of the cross section and the elastic neutral axis. Take the bottom of the cross section, we go up 1 inch, and what do you know, right here in the middle, is our centroid of the cross section. So again, we knew that the center of the, of the square is going to be smack in the middle there at one inch from the bottom, but I wanted to use a simple example to illustrate how you could actually solve that by breaking this problem up into component areas. All right, let's get rid of some of this. Now for the next part of the problem, we're going to calculate the moment of inertia. And the formula for moment of inertia is the sum of the individual moment of inertias of the parts plus the sum of the areas times the distance squared. And this is a different distance than when you calculate the centroid. This is the distance between the centroid of the component and the elastic neutral axis. So considering these two areas and the fact that we now know we don't need this benchmark anymore because we were only using that to find the elastic neutral axis. I'm like, let's take that out of there. And we know our elastic neutral axis is this line right through the middle. But let's stick where there are areas A1 and A2 just for this example problem. A good equation to memorize is the moment of inertia for any rectangle is the base times the height cubed over 12. So we look at square number one and I'll color it for you real quick. So we have a two inch base and we have a one, eight, one inch height. So the moment of inertia of that piece is two times one cubed divided by 12. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Let's just call it one sixth right now instead of pulling some decimals into it. I2, or the moment of inertia of this piece on the bottom, well, it's the exact same shape as the one on top, so we know it's going to be the same answer, right? One sixth. So basically, we've got this term. Now we need to find the areas times the square of the distances. Well, I purposefully left the areas up here because I knew we were going to need them again. So now all we need to do is find the distance between the centroid of each component and the elastic neutral axis. So the centroid of number one is here, and the elastic neutral axis is here. So here's D1 right there. And again, let me do erase some of this uh, previous marks from when we were finding the centroid to make sure it's clear to everyone. Okay. And this distance we can see is one half.
Same thing down here. We have the distance between the centroid of component number two and the elastic neutral axis of the cross section, and this dimension is also one half inch. So we're ready to plug this into our equation. The moment of inertia, the total moment of inertia of that entire square, which we've broken down into two subcomponents, equals I1, one sixth, plus I2, one sixth, plus A1 D1 squared, two inches squared, times one half squared, plus a2 d2 squared. Same expression because we're dealing with such a simple shape here. All right, just for kicks, let's put it in the calculator. 1 divided by 6 equals, I have two of them, so I'm just going to multiply it times 2. Now I'm going to add 1 half squared is the same thing as saying 1 over 4. 2 over 4 is 1 half, so I'm going to add 1 half plus one half, and that's actually plus one. So plus one equals 1.3. The units are inches to the fourth. Now let's check our work with our definition of the moment of inertia of a rectangle equals the base times the height cubed over 12. And again, we're just going to look at the entire thing just to check our work to see if this answer we got is correct. So the base is 2. The height is 2. We're going to cube it. We're going to divide the whole thing by 12. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 12 equals 1.3 inches to the fourth. So you can see that you could break up a larger area into any number of component areas and use this equation to find the moment of inertia of any complex cross-section. And that's the end of this example. Bye.